Lately, you've seen this weapon in the news a lot. These firearms elicit emotions for millions of Americans. Some want these weapons to be available and unrestricted, some want to regulate them, and some want to ban them outright. But what do you know about these rifles? How do they work? And why did they become so widespread? This weapon is hotly politicized, with some saying the data and equipment are just too complicated to properly debate, which has been made even more complicated by emotion and propaganda. So let's try to cut through that. First, we need to know what this is. People call this the AR-15, but it's part of a family of weapons that are all related to the Armalite AR-15, a gas-operated rifle that the US military adopted in the 1960s. The military named it the M16, and that has variants, the M16A1, A2, and A4. There's also the shorter carbine version, called the M4, or its variants like the CAR-15 or Colt Commando, or versions with different systems and markets, like the HK416, Canada C7, or Danish LSV M04. And on top of that, Colt bought the design from Armalite and uses the trademark AR-15, which just makes things even more confusing. This one firearm family has scores of cousins and configurations, which is one reason people call it too complicated, and why many just call this whole family the Black Rifle. So that's what this is. But what made it so popular? You can trace the success of this weapon to a few things. First, engineering. Second, US patent law. And third, more engineering. So first, engineering. At its most simple, a gun is a fairly basic machine that takes advantage of simple physics. You take a tube, you add something explosive, and you put a projectile in front of that explosion to push it out of the tube. Firearms have been around for a millennia, but it wasn't until the end of the 1700s that, for the first time ever, a firearm had interchangeable parts. Imagine that. Before the late 1700s, a gun was a hand-wrought personal machine. Even simple muskets were handmade individuals, and every gun was a one-of-a-kind possession. If it broke, parts needed to be made by a gunsmith to fit your weapon. But now with interchangeable parts, a gun could be modified or repaired, completely built from parts. This was a revelation and important, so hold on to that idea. Next, with more advancements, they made firing faster and eventually insertable magazines were invented, containing multiple rounds and improvements in design generally made weapons lighter and easier to use. But they also fired faster and faster and faster. American military studies completed during World War II and the Korean War found, when armed with an automatic rifle that fires as long as the trigger is squeezed, soldiers shot at a large area to suppress the enemy rather than aiming at specific targets. So engineers shifted their attention from shot quality to shot Quantity. In 1956, in response to the need for speed, E.M. Stoner applied for a patent that describes a simple method for siphoning expanding gases from exploding gunpowder to operate the reloading mechanism of a military-style rifle. This was a big deal. It opened the door for better performing and longer lasting automatic weapons for military combat. In 1962, Stoner's gas system was assessed and accepted by the Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. But the government was dragging its feet to adopt the AR-15. And by 1963, ads appeared selling the semi-automatic version of this military weapon to the public. By 1966, the Army and Marine Corps were issuing the rifle to troops in Vietnam under its new name, the M16. And then in 1977, Stoner's patent expired. This is when the US patent law part comes into play. Once in the public domain, other companies could take advantage of this firing system and another thing, the interchangeable parts. With the AR-15, Armalite and Colt, don't just manufacture a rifle, they also provide a platform. The AR-type rifle was and is modular. Modular meaning parts are so interchangeable that you can almost get them anywhere and customize almost every part of this weapon. Owners can take and swap out the stock, the grip, the chamber, or the barrel, which are commonly called the uppers or lowers. And once the internet came on the scene, you could buy these parts almost anywhere. People can even 3D print parts to build a black rifle at home, Someone did in 2013 and fired over 600 rounds. The lowers are what actually legally constitutes a gun. This is where the serial number is and the action is contained. These interchangeable parts can alter the type and caliber of a shot, the type of magazine, and people can even add a scope or two or a grenade launcher if that's their thing. For the military, this was a feature, not a bug. According to a piece about it in the Washington Post, it makes the weapon ideal for, quote, close and medium to long range engagements and the preferred weapon used to kill the enemies of the United States. But for civilians, these interchangeable parts meant that the black rifle could be used in different ways. 
An owner could swap in different uppers for varmint hunting, big game hunting, or target practice, or different lowers to accommodate various magazines or stocks. And this is how we ended up arguing over specific parts, like bump stocks. There are even parts for show guns that aren't even for shooting, they're just for being fancy. The AR-type weapon's success in civilian life is because it's kind of like a custom-built motorcycle, homebrew computer, or 3D-printed model. No two black rifles have to be the same. Which brings us back to why some say it's too complicated to debate. But it could be uncomplicated if we just had consistent language to address when discussing it. The AR-type weapon is one of the most popular weapons in the world. The National Shooting Sports Foundation estimates 5 to 10 million AR platform weapons are in circulation in the United States alone. But no one knows exactly how many, because in 1986, Congress made it illegal to register any firearms, firearm owners, or transactions. So here we are. This modular weapon is a result of the world's military's search for a rapid-fire simple weapon that people of all sizes and backgrounds could use. Hopefully, this video helps you talk to your friends about what you do or don't like about this weapon and helps us all understand why they seem to be everywhere. This is a tough topic to be unbiased about, and it carries a lot of emotion for people. In the end, like any piece of engineering, what we do with these black rifles isn't just the responsibility of those who created it, those who manufacture it, those who sell it, those who regulate it, or those who use it. But it's about all of us. The future is in our hands. Firearms and weapons aren't the only things in a military arsenal. Have you ever wondered how we got photos from spy satellites before digital cameras? You can find out here. At Seeker, we share stories about science, technology, engineering, and math every day, so take a second and subscribe. If you've got feelings about this, please comment or send us a tweet at Seeker or me at Trace Dominguez. And thanks for tuning in.